Hello students, we have been dealing with the lesson Conservation of Plants and Animals through several sessions. Today, before going into the topic, let us have a short introspection. Let's just ask ourselves a few questions. How much do you love nature? Do you remember your first walk through a forest? Your first swim in the ocean? The first time you saw a wild animal? Don't you think you are really dependent on nature? Are you aware that 40% of oxygen in the world comes from rainforests? 50% of the chemical medicines are based on nature and 100% of our food comes from nature. Are we taking these for granted? Now, these are not my personal questions to you. These are asked by the world's largest and most diverse environmental network, the IUCN. Yes, today we are dealing with the topic IUCN and protected areas. The International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, is a membership union uniquely composed of both government and civil society organization. It provides public, private and non-governmental organizations with the knowledge and tools that enable human progress, economic development and nature conservation to take place together. Do you know when was IUCN established? To make it easy for you to remember, it was just the very next year after our country India got its independence. The IUCN is celebrating its 70th anniversary this year 2018. Now you got it right, yes, created in 1948, IUCN has evolved into the world's largest and most diverse environmental network. It harnesses the experience, resources and reach of its 1,300 member organizations throughout 160 countries and the input of some 10,000 experts. The IUCN is the global authority on the status of natural world and the measures needed to safeguard it. The IUCN's World Commission on Protected Areas, the WCPA, is the world's premier network of protected area expertise. It is administered by IUCN's Global Program on Protected Areas and has over 2,000 members spanning 140 countries. The WCPA has developed six protected area management categories that define protected area according to their management objectives which are internationally recognized by various national government organizations and the United Nations. The categories provide international standards for defining the protected area and encourage the planning and execution of conservation. Protected areas are one of the important tools used across the globe for in-situ conservation. They also demonstrate the commitment of present generation to the future generations. Presently, about one-tenth of the world's land surface is under some form of protected area network. Now, let us see the six protected area management categories. Category 1 has two parts, part A and part B. Category 1A stands for strict nature reserve. Category 1A are strictly protected areas set aside to protect biodiversity and also possibly the geological or geomorphical features where human visitation, use and impacts are strictly controlled and limited to ensure protection of the conservation values. 
Category 1B corresponds to the wilderness area. Category 1B protected areas are usually large areas retaining their natural character and influence without permanent or significant human habitation which are protected and managed so as to preserve their natural condition. Category 2 stands for National Parks. They are large natural or near natural areas set aside to protect large scale ecological processes along with the complement of species and ecosystems characteristic of the area which also provide a foundation for environmentally and culturally compatible spiritual, scientific, educational, recreational and visitor opportunities. As of today, India has around 103 national parks. Category 3 corresponds to natural monument or feature. They are areas set aside to protect a specific natural monument which can be a landform, sea mount, submarine cavern, geological feature such as a cave or even a living feature such as an ancient groove. They are generally quite small protected areas and have often high visitor value. Category 4 stands for Habitat or Species Management Area. It aims to protect particular species or habitats and the management reflects this priority. Many Category 4 protected areas will need regular active interventions to address the requirements of particular species or to maintain the habitats. Wildlife sanctuaries comes under category 4. India has around 544 wildlife sanctuaries till date. Category 5 corresponds to protected area landscape or seascape. These are places where the interaction of people and nature over time has produced an area of distinct character with significant ecological, biological, cultural and scenic value and where safeguarding the integrity of this interaction is vital to nature conservation. And finally, the category 6 stands for protected area with sustainable use of natural resources. These are areas that conserve ecosystems and habitats together with associated cultural values and traditional natural resource management systems. They are generally large with most of the area in a natural condition where a proportion is under sustainable natural resource management and where low level non-industrial use of natural resources compatible with nature conservation is seen as one of the main aims. This is all about protected area categories by WCPA. Now it's your homework to find out the protected area category in your neighborhood and your state. Also keep asking the questions that I mentioned in the beginning. What are you planning to gift your mother nature? Yes, let's not waste time. Get set with your tiny yet significant step towards conserving our nature. It's high time for action. Thank you.